Hi, my name is Dinesh Wadiwal and I'm a researcher and teacher at the University of Sydney. I'm going to talk today about the concept biopolitics. The idea of biopolitics was made famous by the French thinker Michel Foucault. In thinking about power, Foucault was interested in how power changed in this rationality of organisation over a number of centuries. And he's particularly interested in the shift between the organisation of power, say, in medieval Europe and the organisation of power today. At a different time, Foucault theorises that power was much more concerned with the use of violence and coercion to attain resources and territory. So he, he conjures the image of, for example, a medieval king who rules by the sword for their own gain. Against this, Foucault notices that in the contemporary period, it's not, not so clear that governments purely rule by the sword. While the use of violence and coercion is central to contemporary logics of, of governmentality, he also notices that increasingly governments look to foster the lives of populations in some way. For example, many governments invest actively in public health, they actively encourage through public campaigns individuals to um, better their own health and survival. For example, encouraging drivers to drive safely or encouraging individuals through public media campaigns to stop smoking. While there is an interest for Foucault in the way that um, contemporary governments flourish or make populations flourish, he also notices that this biopolitical rationality also shapes the way that violence is orchestrated in contemporary societies. Throughout the 20th century, many governments use violence and coercion as a tool to secure the life of po particular populations. Foucault argues that we see this most clearly in the logic of state racism, where a population will seek to target and persecute and potentially annihilate a minority population in the name of the securement and betterment of another population. Foucault's primary example for this, or thinking about this, is the Holocaust. Foucault's account of biopolitics is highly persuasive in many ways. However, it contained a number of omissions. At least one problem with the account is, for example, that Foucault tends to ignore the history of colonisation, and with that, uh, the spectacles of violence that accompanied colonisation, such as racial slavery. Other scholars have pointed out that Foucault doesn't do so well in describing the relationship of gender to biopolitics or disability to biopolitics. Another area of significant omission is in relation to thinking about animals. Foucault it seems largely uninterested in the way that biopolitical rationalities have shaped the, the lives of animals. And certainly, if we look at the history of the 20th century, it's hard not to notice the way that a biopolitical rationality has shaped our treatment of animals, particularly in industrial agriculture. If we think about the factory farm today, it involves the most ruthless controls over nutrition, what animals eat, their movement, their relationality with other animals, lighting, their sexuality and their reproduction. In fact, control over all of these elements is essential for industrial animal agriculture to turn a profit today. Foucault famously remarked that the logic of biopolitics is something like this, the capacity to foster life and disallow it to the point of death. A question that myself and other, others are, have asked is, isn't this precisely what we did to animals in the 20th century? Didn't we foster their lives up until the point at which they were no longer useful to us and then kill them for our own benefit, for our own tastes and desires, for our own profits. To that extent, I think biopolitics remains a really useful tool for understanding contemporary power relations between humans and animals.